44 year old Florida governor Ron DeSantis has announced his presidential bid for 2024 elections. DeSantis, the biggest Republican rival that Donald Trump faces now, DeSantis made the announcement through a campaign video ahead of joining Twitter CEO Elon Musk on the social media platform. But as an overwhelming lot of listeners joined Twitter spaces, it crashed. He faces the daunting task of closing an enormous polling gap with Trump posting leads close to 40 percentage points. Several ad videos were released in support and against the Florida governor's candidacy. His bid is supported by prominent Republican financier and one-time backer of former U.S. President Donald Trump, Hall Lambert. Failure. I believe that decline... Florida Governor Ron DeSantis suffered a chaotic start to his 2024 presidential election race on Wednesday when glitches spoiled an online forum hosted by Twitter owner Elon Musk that was meant to showcase DeSantis's fitness for the job. The broadcast of, the, of, of an hour-long interview, which was intended as the formal launch for the DeSantis's campaign, lost sound for extended stretches and users were either unable to join or were dropped. The world's largest aircraft carrier, the USS Gerald R. Ford, sailed into Oslo on Wednesday in a show of NATO force at a time of heightened tensions between NATO and Russia over the war in Ukraine. This is a first for such a U.S. ship to join the war scene. According to the Norwegian military, the ship and its crew will be conducting training exercises with the Norwegian armed forces along with the country's coast in the coming few days. A 95-year-old woman who was heckled by the police at an Australian care home has died. The gruesome incident has sparked a public outrage. Claire Nowland was critically injured after police responded to reports that she was wandering around the home with a knife last Wednesday. New South Wales police said that she died surrounded by family and her loved ones. The 33-year-old senior constable who heckled Mrs. Nowland has been charged with an assault. Russian President Vladimir Putin has said that the energy prices have been approaching economically justified levels. He said that Russia is continuing to meet its commitments on the energy supplies. Speaking at a conference of the Russian-led Eurasian Economic Union in Moscow, Putin also raised the issue of energy shortages in Europe. The head of the Russian private army, Wagner, claims that his force lost more than 20,000 soldiers in the drawn-out battle for the eastern Ukrainian city of Bakhmut. Yevgeny Prigozhin suggested that about half of those who died in Bakhmut were Russian convicts recruited to fight in the 15-month-old war. Pope Francis has offered his support to Catholics in China, emphasizing his closeness with the faithful. He was marking the World Day of Prayer for the Church in China. China's Communist Party exercises strict control over all recognized religious institutions in China. Pope Francis led a years-long effort to build ties with Beijing and in 2018, reaching a two-year agreement on the appointment of the bishops. The Russian Prime Minister met his Chinese counterpart in Beijing on Wednesday. The visit comes as Russia is increasingly turning to China for diplomatic and economic support amid growing isolation over its invasion of Ukraine. China says it is a neutral party between Russia and Ukraine and wants to help broker an end to the conflict. But it has blamed the West for provoking Moscow and has maintained strong diplomatic and trade ties with Russia in opposition to sanctions against it. Now, the Russian Prime Minister emphasized Moscow's role as a provider of oil and gas to China and the bonds formed an initial, as initial allies among the communist nations.
Britain's King Charles III and his wife visited Northern Ireland uh, yesterday for the first time since their coronation. The couple greeted local children before opening the gates of the coronation garden. Charles and Camilla climbed the three-floor pavilion which designer Dermond Gavin planted with pollinator-friendly specimens where they had a bird's eye view of the dancing tipuri included in the new garden. British Foreign Minister James Cleverly met with his Brazilian counterpart in Brasilia on Wednesday during a tour of Latin America. Vera received Cleverly at the Itamarthi Palace in Brasilia on Wednesday afternoon, where the British official expressed London support for Brazil's ambitions for a permanent seat of the UN Security Council. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida will meet Sri Lanka's president on Thursday as the South Asian nation looks to bolster efforts to restructure its debt and also repair an economy deeply scarred by, by a severe financial crisis. Sri Lanka defaulted on its foreign debt for the first time in its history in April last year as its economy was crushed by its worst financial crisis since independence from Britain in 1948. Sri Lanka owes $7.1 billion to its creditors with $3 billion owed to China, $1.6 billion to India and $2.4 billion to the Paris Club, a group of creditor nations. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky on Wednesday said that Kiev was continuing preparations to use and also receive F-16 fighter jets to help in the fight against the Russian invasion. Zelensky said that the Ukrainian forces had already proven that they could master modern weapons, adding that he was sure his country's pilots would be just as successful in their training on the aircraft. The U.S. has given the green light to allow Ukrainian pilots to train to fly F-16s, which has created an inextricable momentum. Western intelligence agencies and Microsoft said on Wednesday that a state-sponsored Chinese group has been spying on a wide range of critical U.S. infrastructure organizations, ranging from telecommunications to transportation hubs. In its report, Microsoft also said that the espionage has also targeted the U.S. island territory of Guam, home to strategically important American military bases. Experts say that this is one of the largest known Chinese cyber espionage campaigns against the American critical infrastructure. After a successful three-nation trip to Japan, Papua New Guinea and Australia, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has returned to India. The next on Prime Minister's list is the inauguration of the new Indian Parliament building on May 28th. The opposition parties have objected to Prime Minister Modi's inaugurating the constitutional structure, while Prime Minister Modi has not commented on the same. India's new parliament building will be inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday. According to reports, Sengal, a historic Chola era inspired relic, will be placed in the new parliament. Home Minister Amit Shah announced the same. The relic is a replica of a golden scepter from Tamil Nadu dating back to 600 BC. The Prime Minister will also honour 60,000 workers during the inauguration. The new parliament is a part of the Indian government's initiative to celebrate 75 years of independence. Imran Khan has offered to form a negotiating committee to seek a way out of the standoff with the authorities in Pakistan. As several leaders of his party resigned, says that he would comply if the committee was convinced that the matter could be resolved by him stepping aside from politics. And babies are being abandoned in the conflict-torn Syria. As reportedly, the newly born infants are being abandoned outside mosques, hospitals and even under olive trees. Syria has been embroiled in a conflict since 2011, an in-house conflict that has displaced millions of Syrians as the country continues to quiver under the shadows of the destructive unrest that single-handedly broke it apart. 
While the adoption is forbidden across Syria, the local authorities have been asked for permission to raise Hibatullah. Meanwhile, voters in Turkey will return to vote on Sunday as the country heads for a runoff poll on May 28th. The country will decide between an increasingly authoritarian incumbent and a challenger who has pledged to restore democracy in the country. Incumbent pres President Recep Tayyip Erdogan scored 49.5%, while the leader of the opposition, Kemal Kilic Darulu, received 44.9%. At 69, Erdogan is already Turkey's longest-serving leader, having ruled over the country as prime minister since 2003 and as the president since 2014. He could remain in power until 2028, that is, if he is re-elected. Residents near the Popaca Teptil volcano in Mexico have been sweeping ashes from the streets as the volcano has become increasingly explosive, spewing great plumes of gas, ash and burning rocks into the air, putting the residents and the farmers in a worry about their crops and the animals. The activity led by the Mexican government to raise the warning level. The authorities have warned people to stay out of 7.5 mile radius around the peak. And powerful Typhoon Mavar has started showing its destructive uh, nature after effects after it hit the Guam island. It is interrupting uh, with travel and commuting in the tropical island. The island is also going to be noticeably and increasingly humid. Mavar is the strongest typhoon that has hit so close to the United States in nearly 20 years. Maximum sustained winds in the typhoon were 140 miles per hour as of the latest Joint Typhoon Warning Center advisory, making Mavar a strong Category 4 equivalent. Winds up to 104 miles per hour have also been locked at Guam's International Airport. And Saturn's iconic icy rings may not be around for future sky gazers to glimpse at through their telescopes. According to new research, the data captured by NASA's Cassini mission, which orbited the gas giant planet between 2004 and 2017, has revealed new insights into the age of the iconic. The rings it also provided the probable time in which the rings might be lost. The findings have been shared in three studies published this month which supports the theory of the rings appearing long after Saturn's initial formation. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and the bosses of leading artificial intelligence companies like OpenAI, Google, DeepMind and Anthropic will work together to ensure that the society benefits from the transformational technology. The British Prime Minister and the tech leaders met on Wednesday and discussed the risks AI uh, stages from disinformation and also national security to existential threats. Britain said in March that it would split responsibility for governing AI between its existing regulators for human rights, health and safety and also the competition rather than creating a new body dedicated to the technology. Students at Redarm House School in Berkshire, England are using VR headsets to enter the metaverse for a variety of interactive lessons from getting up close and personal with a mammoth to manipulating the planets of the solar systems. The Metaverse School is being developed by Inspired Education Group using the physical school as the virtual reality location for the global students. The school is a digital twin of the school building in virtual reality that brings together students from all around the world to understand virtual reality. The entrance to the iconic singer Tina Turner's home in Switzerland was decorated with flowers, scandals and tributes on Thursday following her death at age 83. 
Fans left notes with their names and messages outside the gates of her home. Near Zurich, along with tributes using Turner's well-known song lyrics, You Are Simply the Best, the American-born singer died after a long illness in a Swiss home on Wednesday. The Wildcats bred in captivity are going to be released into the National Park in Scotland. The species are native to the country but have been driven to the brink of extinction. 20 cats are set to be released this year, starting in the next few weeks.